Good afternoon, CSE ears. It is Thursday, August the 24th already. August is almost over. And this is the 11th episode of Conquering Contact with me, Stephen Drostrom, Manager of Contact here at CSE. And today we will be talking about emotional content. The emotions that make you laugh, that make you cry, and make you terrified. All wrapped up into your content. Um, so the reason, first off, for making emotional content is you want to appeal to your audience in a way beyond their intellect. So it's not a matter of just providing information. Blah, blah, A, B, C, D, this is what you need to know. Okay, you need something that has impact, that connects to your audience in a way other than to their mind uh, on an intellectual level. It's just not informing them. And the, probably the biggest uh, indicator that this works is, you know, the whole concept of clickbait stuff. You know, the, the, uh, the, the titles that grab your imagination to make you look at the stupidest things. Like, um, everyone at some point has looked at one of these things that has popped up in social media. It's like the, the top ten actresses you didn't know wore red on a Wednesday. You know, like these type of things. Like, there's all these massive lists that you see in social media. Well, that's clickbait. Or, you know, um, you could die by Tuesday. Click here to find out how. That's clickbait. So they dif different ones appeal to uh, different emotions. There's the fear one, you know, dying by Tuesday is definitely going to be a, a fear-based content. Um, and a lot of them appear to, uh, appeal to a sense of humor. You know, a lot of things like uh, what you didn't know about your favorite shows and bloopers and things like that. That's the type of content that appeal appeals to your humor. So how do you incorporate this? into your association, your organization's content, because that type of content is driven for advertising uh, income. It's made to make you go to a page, sure, it gives you a slideshow, uh, it's typically how it is. One image at a time, click a slideshow, refresh, refresh the page instead of scrolling down through it all. And the reason why, because that allows you to sit there for all 25 pictures about the, this information about the, your favorite TV show that you didn't know, and it gives them 25 pages that then they can put advertising on and put it in front of you. Okay, so you generally aren't going to want to do something like that to your audience in an association because they're going to get really upset with you really quick. Um, so you have to find a better purpose. So some of the major purposes, uh, the, the primary purposes for using emotional content for an association, uh, association or a business, is um, audience building. You want, <coughs> excuse me, you want some an emotion that brings your uh, brings new audience members into your content to have a look and you know maybe get them to subscribe or keep coming back to look at your other content because you've got something that's appealed to them it made them laugh and they're like okay well let's let's see what else comes around you know let's see uh, let's see what else they do that is going to make me uh, that's going to make me want to come back and remain interested in their content so you, every now and then you got to put something out that is funny or frightening or um, you know appeals some way to their emotions uh, and be careful the emotions you appeal to um, it's got to be very on topic for your overall theme of your organization and your content in general. Uh, another thing is fundraising. Uh, and a lot of not-for-profits, uh, mostly in charities and the like, use fundraising, but you know associations do too on occasion. Um, you know, fundraising is a great way to do emotions. If your organization is participating in a charity to help fight a disease, for example, there's some pretty easy ways to tap into emotion there, usually with anecdotes and the like. Uh, you see it all the time, you know, this person has this illness, here's their life story, and here's some content about them. And that draws people into that story, it makes them feel for the subject, and then of course that makes them more likely to, uh, to follow through your path of conversion to, say, provide funds for that charity. So there are other ways to do that in, in aspects that uh, are, are more contextually aligned with associations. Uh, and then other things are simply to bring awareness to the topic. Sure, you can inform people with your content, but and it's not necessarily always boring just to be informative, but if you're appealing to an emotion at the same way, you're kind of hitting the, the topic from two different directions. You know, there's the intellectual level and then there's the emotional level and, you know, your content is squished in between them. And that's going to increase the chance of people paying attention to what you're saying. And it also resonates more with it because people recall emotions. They remember them. They're something that's very real when it comes up, to, when it comes up with memory. So it's another level of a, a mnemonic for getting people to remember your content as well. So how do you create that clickbait effect for your content? Well, first off, when you're creating content, 
is it something you can wrap an emotion around? Is it something like, if it's something that's changing in your association uh, or in your sector, then, you know, then maybe you just need something that, that emotion that's going to appeal to it. Um, and that's going to draw the attention to your content because, you know, uh, this, this change could be something so dramatic that a lot of people are going to be left unaware and it could cause harm to them uh, legally. So, for example, Castle. Castle uh, was something that people were really afraid of. It. So if you're putting out content about Castle, playing on that fear is a really good way to get people's attention to it. Like, what could go wrong for your association if you're not Castle compliant by July 1st, 2017? You know, it may seem odd, but you know, don't use that voice. Um, but it, it may seem like a little harsh way to go at it. But the truth is, is that people already had that fear in them and you tap into it and you draw them to your content about castle. So you got to think about that. Uh, also humor. Humor is a universal language. Everyone gets humor. People find different things funny, of course, but there's something that everyone finds funny. There's no person in this world that is totally without humor. All right. So humor is an easy way to tap into people's content. It's probably one of the easier emotions uh, so far as content creation goes. As long as you've got someone funny, who's creating the content. A lot of people think they're funny. They're not funny. I sometimes think I'm hilarious, but if people tell me that it's just not true. Sure, they're liars, but they still say, this. They still say that to me. So um, the big thing about that is know who your audience is. You know, generally, what are they going to find funny? And um, it's okay to laugh at yourself and your organization. You know, if there's, if you know there's certain stereotypes about your organization that people pass around, you know, there's certain things that people say, you know, just own that, take control of that. So here's a way that uh, emotional content has two purposes, you know, it draws in the attention, but it also does a little bit of damage control. Because if people have negative things to say about your organization, then when you own it, you're just kind of putting it out on the table and saying, yes, we're aware of this. And, you know, it's kind of saying we'll do something about it, but also we're able to laugh at it and uh, move on. So be, don't be afraid to laugh at yourself as an organization or as yourself as an individual. Same thing. If people say a bunch of things about you, then, you know, feel free. Uh, for example, I've been told that I have a rather large crooked nose. So I make very, <laughs> I quite often will make jokes about my nose because it's just, you know, it's just kind of taking the wind out of people's sails um, if they have negative things to say. And it's just, uh, the it's same thing goes for your content. Just go ahead. Make fun of your organization. Don't be afraid of it. Uh, just... Do not make fun of your audience. That is the exact opposite of drawing your audience to you. You are pushing them away. So make fun of yourself, fine. Make fun of your organization, fine. Making fun of your audience, no, no, no. That's a big bad one. Um, and CSE has done a number of things since uh, I've come on as content manager that have kind of tapped into humor. Um, you might have seen the videos and so forth. And some people just don't get it. They won't. So don't think that your joke has to be so watered down and thin because you, you want to get you want everybody to get it um, just don't even try it's not going to happen some people won't get it and some people might complain and say what is this you know this is unprofessional uh, as I just wrote um, a couple of weeks ago in the CSE blog about you know the nature of professionalism and content versus professionalism in the office how those two definitions don't mix keep that in mind when you're doing this kind of content uh, you don't have to stick to the the very rigid uh, version of professionalism that most people go by, you know, don't be afraid to be a little bit off the wall, but take it in steps. You know, you don't want to shock your audience because you've been so, you know, back uh, rigid and just, you know, frozen emotionally as an organization. And all of a sudden you're just like all slapstick. It's going to throw people off. So do it incrementally, you know, uh, do it in ways that aren't shocking. They'll make people laugh, but they won't be shocked or turned away from you. Now, if you get negative feedback, listen to it, see if it's just the person just not getting the joke, or if they have a legitimate point to make, and then incorporate that into your future content. Um, what else? Uh, I guess, really, some of the fear and humor are probably the two biggest emotions. It's really hard to tap into, also empathy, you know, compassion is another big one, especially for fundraising. Uh, it's really hard to put those three emotions into some topics. Like if you're talking about associations and membership, um, you know, how to create, uh, to grow your membership and like, 
you know, there's a way to do it with humor, there's a way to do it with fear, and there's a way to do it with compassion. But you don't want to be, you know, ham-fisted with it. You don't want to hit the person over the head with it. It's got to it's gotta fit seamlessly with your topic. You know, it can't seem too contrived. And then beyond those three emotions, which are, as I said, the three easiest typically for content, you know, there of course there are other emotions, but they're not easy. Like, how do you fit love into your content? You're talking about, you know, how to get sponsors. How do you work love into that? Do you have a love story where, you know, someone in your association met a sponsor and they fell in love and got married? Great, but unless you've got that situation, love probably isn't going to play a role in that particular dialogue. So again, don't go reaching too much. If the only thing you can ever find for your con your emotional content is humor, then just roll with it if it works with you. Uh, if it works for you, don't keep saying, "Well, okay, we've been rolling with these jokes for a long time. Let's try switching it up and go with fear or you know, uh, or compassion or something." Work with what works for your association, and uh, it's also important to say when I say fear, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about you know. Uh, know what your your audience's concerns are and play to those concerns. Address them by you know first out of the gate with your content, you know underscoring, really emphasizing that those fears exist. Don't go trying to create new fears in your audience. You know you don't want to turn them into phobics or make it look like your organization is paranoid. So when you use emotional content, there's a lot of nuance to it, a lot of subtlety. Um, for the most part, and sometimes, you know, subtlety just goes out the window. Like when I'm wearing uh, a wig in a video, subtlety is just going bye-bye and out the door. So, you know, have, it, it's like anything when it comes to content creation, emotional content, knowing how to do it, knowing how to roll it out the door, knowing how to appeal to your audience properly, knowing how to prepare it. Uh, these are all skills that are layered on top of standard content creation. There's a lot of content creators out there who write great blogs, great articles, they're great at research, they're great at connecting with their audience, but they're really, really horrible with adding emotion to their content. You know, for example, someone who's just not funny. They could be like, give you the greatest insight in your blog, but they just don't have a sense of humor. So sometimes, you know, you might have to look to some outside sources and uh, maybe get some help, get some guest content contributors. There's a lot of uh, consultants in the association sector, uh, a lot of people who do speaking engagements and the like, and they really incorporate their sense of humor well into their content. So, you know, maybe look at these people, seek them out, look at what they're rolling out, look at some of their videos. Most of them have videos online that show some of their speaking, tour, uh, speaking engagements that have been recorded. Look at them and get some hints. But uh, when all is said and done, the power effectiveness and ability to connect with the audience that emotional content represents cannot be understated. So um, uh, if, as always, if anybody has any comments or questions, you know, feel free to email me at steven at csae.com. Leave them in any of the, uh, the comment options below wherever you find this video. And uh, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll find ways to add emotion to your content in ways that aren't going to, you know, scare your audience to death or scare them away from your organization. So other than that, all I can say is best of luck, be funny, be emotional, um, and let's see what happens. Don't be afraid to experiment. As always, that's my, that's my guiding principle when it comes to content creation. Don't be afraid to experiment. Try it to see if it works for you. Don't be afraid of experimentation. That's it for episode 11 of CSE's Conquering Content with me, Stephen Trustroom, manager of content here and uh, emotional content. Get down with it. Try it out. Don't be afraid.